Hello there, and welcome to the first of my pontifications. Here I'm going to be looking at They Came From Beneath the Sea, a really cool game uh, that's uh, currently on Kickstarter and will be coming out soon, and how to cross over this with the World of Darkness. Uh, though the second half of the pontification will be mainly about why you want to do something like that. And believe me, there are very good reasons to want to do that. So, first of all, what is They Came From Beneath the Sea? Well, it's being developed by the Gentleman Gamer, uh, whose channel you may know. And the idea is it's based on the sort of 1950s style sci-fi-ish situation, B-movies, in which you find you and a team of uh, intrepid stereotypes um, find that they came from beneath the sea. Something is emerging from the sea to threaten the calm of your all-American beaches and town. Um, it's, it seems to be, because it's not yet fully uh, out there, it seems to be really fascinating, has a number of interesting um, aspects like quips, which your character can use, at certain times and also certain, I uh, forget the term, but you can basically take over uh, as a director in a certain sense, uh, dramatic moments, like your character can maybe tear through scenery or be replaced with a stunt double for the purpose of uh, physical activity um, and so on. So it's very much cinematographic uh, and quite comedic uh, in the description that the gentleman gamer gives uh, about how he developed it. He basically says he makes it more and more comedic at each iteration and people seem to enjoy it uh, more. And that was a cinematographic, a dramatic camp. Comedic seems to be the direction which was naturally tending. Now, the world of darkness, which I'm not going to give you an introduction <laughs> to, um, is normally strikes a very different tone. Um, there's far less comedy, but we'll get to that uh, in a second. So if we want to do a crossover, let's have a look first of all at the technical aspects of the crossover. Well, the most natural thing to cross over with the game line to use would be Hunter the Reckoning. The heroes are hunters, they have seen something beyond normal mortal ken, in this case, undersea creatures, and they have not stood idly by, but are going to charge out and fight. A lot of the uh, archetypes of hunter can be ported uh, into, uh, they came from beneath the sea, uh, which isn't very surprising because the um, archetypes are archetypes and float around especially things like the every man and the survivor aspect of Hunter, which are sort of classes and they came from beneath the sea, fit very well. Um, another interesting approach would be to make it a sort of low magic technocracy game. Uh, the G-Men uh, uh, class from uh, they came from beneath the sea fit entirely uh, within, say, the New World Order. The scientists, well, they fit within the technocracy, within the Brotherhood of Ether. Um, the mouths um, uh, fit within the... Oh, the syndicate uh, and the other social manipulators. And so it could be seen as a technocracy game. And there's already a hint of how what you can get from the crossover, because the technocracy is often seen as the bad guys, though I definitely don't see them that way. But here, you're taking them as they're unambiguously the good guys. And that makes a lot of sense, because the technocracy is the, are the defenders of the status quo, and the whole genre of B-movies is that the status quo is threatened by, the all-American status quo is threatened by the alien, the other, so for the heroes, Hunter the Reckoning or uh, Mage the Ascension, the Technocracy. 
The opponents can be pretty much anything. There's undersea changelings. There's branches of the technocracy that are underwater. Uh, there's sea grand girls, Rokia, the were sharks. There's uh, lots of different things you can fit in as the enemy. Even sort of very ancient Methuselah sleeping beneath the sea, which fits perfectly with the idea of an ancient aquatic race that's awakening. Now, if it's technically possible to do a crossover, why would you want to? <laughs> Aren't the two games sort of sufficient in themselves? Well, they are, but the main attraction, in my view, of a crossover is that you can expand and mix the themes uh, and enrich both worlds and maybe add some mystery. Um, let me uh, delve deeper into this. The mystery element is because if you've sort of read a lot of the books uh, in the world of darkness, there's not much that's unknown. It's hard to have a character that comes up against something that you can't say, oh, that's a demon, that's a mummy, that's a vampire uh, using a protein and etc. So there's a sort of too much familiarity with the opponents and with the options. The It Came From Beneath the Sea offers the possibility of dramatically expanding. This might be a touch alienish, reptilian, things that are not covered directly in the side the world of darkness. Now maybe ultimately you can explain it, it fits within the world of darkness or it's ghosts uh, from the Shadowlands or whatever uh, you want. But if you start it in the standard, they come from beneath the sea, it expands the mystery a bit. And for those who don't know the world of darkness, well, there's a very rich mythology um, which you can port in and basically get a lot of mystery and a lot of backstory at basically no cost. Just add the concept of sleeping Methuselah and undersea changelings and you have a huge amount of things you can draw on at very little effort and if the players are unfamiliar this is something really deep they can explore. But where it comes most interesting is when you sort of mix or to consider crossovers where you get to mix the themes of the different uh, game lines. Now, I have deliberate, well, as I say, un it came from beneath the sea, is camp, dramatic, um, comedic, and World of Darkness is supposed to be dark, gritty, uh, and all those things. And it seems that they can't mix together, but actually themes and, um, Feelings, uh, not feelings, uh, da, da 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 themes and moods can be mixed very successfully. Um, I recommend looking at Doctor Who, The Empty Child, as an excellent mix of horror and comedy, uh, one of the best that I've seen. I recommend looking at some other Doctor Who episodes to see how it can also go disastrously wrong. Um, so the comedy and horror are not mutually exclusive and can be mixed very well. Um, how could we do that? Well, let's allow me just to illustrate the sort of camp over the top aspect. Imagine uh, that you are dealing with, and even the sort of say plastic alien style thing. Imagine that you are dealing, from the vampire's perspective, with a Methuselah, a sixth generation vampire of immense power. But their mind is a bit gone. They confuse people and things. They confuse epochs. They're mainly nice, but they might address you by the name your grandparents or of their long dead butler 
and they're prone to seeing enemies that no longer exist and go on murder sprees defending against uh, some attack that never actually happened and they're apologetic um, they're stylish and they can be what we have here is something that is objectively a weak confused um figure of fun that becomes a horror because of the immense power that it deploys. Yes, this is a figure of fun, but what if they just kill you one day uh, because they're confused? Um, you, you also have sort of Kafkaesque mixture, well, not so much mixture, but the sort of cruelty of a incompetent bureaucracy. So you can mix incompetence, things that should be mocked, and the very th reason that they're mocked makes them all the more terrifying. The Methuselah, who will kill you one day when he gets your name wrong, and you're listening every day to what he calls you, or the bureaucracy, the... Um, and that the revived creatures from beneath the sea who don't really grasp the modern world, who maybe might come in peace, but are trapped in their own bureaucracy or way of thinking of doing things. So to become, let's make it sort of more specific, and to be fair, this is something which the game's designers have mentioned, you don't have to take the quips and the cinematographic things as extraordinarily campy. They can mechanically have the same action of you tear through the scenery, you break up from the bars, you punch uh, the faceless goons, but this could be, well, your bloodlust overpowers you, you unleash the dark side of your avatar. The same mechanics can correspond to something much more horrible. And when it all ends, when you sort of triumph or win the game, you can get, by playing with the theme, you can get a very different ending, depending on which you do the standard, it came from beneath the sea style, or the standard world of darkness for exactly the same ending. Um, the standard it came from beneath the sea is we heroically saved our town. We might not be appreciated. Then uh, the locals may think we're crazy. And the alien menace is still out there. They shall return. But by golly, we did it now. World of Darkness, exactly the same outcome, but a sort of extra layer of darkness and despair and horror on top of that. Yes, we saved our town. We will not get appreciated. The aliens are still out there. They will come again. We might not be able to fight them the next time, or we won't be around. People won't listen to us. And so again, I could go on uh, giving more details, uh, but the main idea of our crossovers is to try and mix and match the themes from each one and express them in terms of the other and see how you can mix comedy and horror and despair and glorious showing off um, in the same world by taking them from worlds where they are li live more naturally. Anyway, that is my take on that. Um, do go and see it came from beneath the sea. It looks like it'll be a great game and thanks for listening.